Welcome to the next video in the Systems Programming video series. In this video, we will be continuing in the textbook Dive into Systems, discussing section 7.2, where we will learn some common instructions in assembly. To begin with, there are these three. They're mostly self-explanatory, but let's just briefly introduce them. So move, we'll take whatever is in the source and move it into the address. Notice that it copies the value of the source and overwrites whatever is in the destination. And this is how the notation is meant to be read, that like this value is computed and then stored into this location. Add does something very sensible. It takes a copy of the source, adds it with the destination. The result is stored into the destination. Sub is very similar, so we can move on. Let's look at what this does, just to make sure as a quick practice. What does this do? It takes this thing, which is, we are going to take the address of the base pointer. Recall that RBP is the base pointer. That's at the bottom of the currently active stack frame. And we are going to subtract four from the address, right? So that means that we're going from the base up four addresses, and then we're going to look up the memory there. Why are we looking up the memory there? Because this is all with this memory form because of the parens, it's like looking up addresses. So we go up by four and get whatever value is stored at that location in memory, and then we move that, we put it into the register EAX, which just recall is the address of the return value of a function. What do we do next? We then take the constant two and add it in to the return address. I think that's fairly straightforward. So let's just briefly recall how memory is organized when a program is run. We get all of these, right? Like a certain amount of memory is carved out for the run of the program. Early in the addresses are things having to do with the operating system, then there's the function code, there's global variables in the data. Importantly here is heap memory, like that's the kind of stuff that you create and manipulate when you malloc stuff. And then down here is the stack, it's at the very end at some max value and it grows upwards, right? So as we subtract from addresses on the stack, which is mostly what we're gonna be looking at, we're moving upwards in the addresses of the program memory, you know, with everything sort of arranged from low at the top to large at the bottom. Okay, now there are these sort of complex uh, instructions. So the first one is push, right? This is trying to take the execution stack and push onto the top of the execution stack. So if you sort of think that like there can be main and then main maybe calls on something else, and so on, and every time you push, you go up, right? The stack increments, and the top stack is the currently active frame. So let's say that, you know, at some moment, you have your RBP here, you have your RSP here, right? That's where those pointers are supposed to be located, roughly, right, in, in some, like, kind of, I don't know, diagram of the execution stack, which is also kind of in correspondence with locations in memory. But anyway, so what is supposed to happen when you push onto the top of the stack in a moment like this, especially when you perform a push that is supposed to go onto, or yeah, I was gonna talk about like making a new uh, active stack, like making a new frame in the execution stack, but let's not even talk about that. Let's just talk about just, you know, you take the current execution stack and you add on to the current execution stack. What do you do? You are subtracting eight from the stack pointer, right? So remember that the, you know, these registers like RSP are 64 bits, which is eight bytes. And so that's why we're moving eight memory addresses up, right, we are subtracting, which means that we're going up towards lower addresses in memory that's adding onto the stack. And so that's what the first thing is when, you're do, when you do a push is you move the stack pointer. So now the stack pointer is pointing at a new memory address, right? So in a sense, like you cross that out and now you're out, your RSP is up here. And then what you do is you take whatever this source is and you move it into the address of the new thing, right? So, so the value S gets written into that new location of the stack pointer. 
And that's what a push to the stack does. Okay, let's talk about a pop. Well, pop should basically do the opposite. Let's see what it says technically. It says that when you pop, you'll take whatever is currently in the address of the stack pointer and move it into this destination D, which is whatever you give it, right? I mean, by the way, I guess I should say like S is whatever you want to give it, right? Like, you know, you can push whatever you want to push. And D is the destination, which is going to store the result of the pop. So you move whatever was at the top of the stack, you move it to the destination, and then you add eight onto the address of the stack pointer so that the stack pointer you know, is no longer up here and it's back down here when you pop. And, but the, the value of the stack pointer gets moved into the destination, right? So, so this is not the whole picture of what happens. But anyway, okay, I think that's relatively clear, at least I hope it is. So let's move on. Now, let's return to this function that we saw earlier, but we're just going to analyze this function in isolation because it's so simple. And if we get its assembly code, like, you know, say that we did that thing, that obj dump, and we go look at adder2, this is what you would see. And let's try to understand why is this the assembly code of this C code? Well, we're going to do a walkthrough, right? So what we're going to imagine, and this is unrealistic, these, the, you know, addresses that we put in this little example are deliberately made smaller than is realistic, just so that things are easy to talk about. But let's do a little walkthrough. So let's imagine that initially the registers look like this, which is to say, right, so EAX, the thing that holds the return value, has this in EAX, right? And EDI, that's the thing that holds the first argument to the function. So, you know, I guess what that must mean is that the user, whoever called this function, input the number, whatever, two times 16, 32, 40. So I guess this is the number 40. And so like somebody at some point passed in the number 40 as a call to the function. And the stack pointer is here and the base pointer is here, you know, at whatever moment was calling the function, right? We don't know how we got to, to these values, but just it is what it is. And the instruction pointer is at 526, and notice that up here we're, we're also observing the instruction addresses in, in everything that we have displayed here. And so let's think about how everything changes as we run through the execution uh, of this assembly code. So let's see what, ha like what happens when you push RBP, which is interesting, right? Because like we talked about a push, but here we're pushing the base pointer, which is in a sense kind of like the base pointer is supposed to go to the top of the stack. Isn't that a little confusing? Well, there's a good reason for it. If you think about like, you know, the old value of the base pointer, let's notice the old value of the base pointer was D40 in hex. And that's the old location of the bottom of the currently active stack frame, right? So like before the function gets called and the stack looks something like this, the top of the stack is at D28. The bottom of the stack is apparently down at like, or sorry, not the bottom of the stack, but the bottom of the currently active frame is what I wanna talk about. So like somewhere down here is like the bottom of the frame. Forget this. And that's the currently active frame. And there may be some frame below it and some frame below that for all we know. But the point is that the RBP is pointing to the bottom of the currently active stack frame. And so if we're going to, right, you know, because we're making a call to a function, right? We're talking about the code that's going to execute when you call the adder to function. So what that means is that we need a new stack frame. Well, if we're gonna have a new stack frame, somehow we need to remember how to get back to the old stack frame. How are we going to do that? That's what this first thing does. Because we are pushing the base pointer to the top of the stack, right? That is, this thing is now at the top of the stack. That's that D40 in hex. That's the old base pointer that's being written here at the new top of the stack so that when we're done with this execution of the function, we can use that information to go back and find the old location where the base pointer is for the stack that's one the yeah the stack frame that's one below in the stack so anyway so this is just being written here at the top of the stack so that we can remember how to get back when we're done 
So that's what's going on here. But keep in mind that, you know, two things are happening, right? The stack pointer is getting subtracted by eight. Remember, that's, what, so that's something that a push just always does, is it takes the stack pointer and it subtracts eight. So the new stack pointer location is D20 rather than what it formerly was, D28. So the stack pointer is getting updated. The instruction pointer is always progressing to just whatever is the next instruction address. So it used to be 526, it's gonna become 527. When the next instruction finishes, it's gonna become 52A. By the way, I don't know how these instruction addresses are getting assigned. I don't think we're supposed to think too hard about that. We just take it for granted that the instructions are at these addresses, and we know that we just always progress from one address to the next. And somehow the computer knows how, like which one is supposed to come next. We don't need to worry about that. We just know that that's what happens to the instruction pointer. So anyway, so what's important to notice with all of this in this first push is that the stack pointer gets, in every call, the inst uh, instruction pointer is always gonna get updated. And also the thing that is located at this address is now filled with a meaningful value, which is the address of the old base pointer. And that's what happens in this call to push in the first line of assembly. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, line. And what happens here? Well, now we are going to take the address of the stack pointer and put it into the base pointer. So that's kind of like the next thing that has to happen in order to have everything set up the way a stack frame, yeah, like a stack frame in the execution stack is supposed to be, right? Because like until this line, the base pointer was still pointing to the old base address, right? Only with this line has the base pointer now come from, you know, wherever I guess it used to be at, which I, you know, like down here, like if we just kept doing these addresses, we'd say OXD40, that's where the old base address was. And now after this line, the base address gets updated so that that's no longer where RBP is. Now RBP is up here at the same location as the, RSP, right? That basically the address of RSP is moved into RBP so that RSP and RBP are exactly the same at this point. And that makes sense because we're in a new stack frame. And it, in the currently active stack frame that has only one thing, well, the base pointer should be pointing to the bottom of the stack frame, the currently active stack frame. The stack pointer should be pointing to the top of the currently active stack frame. Well, since there's only one thing here at the moment, then they're both pointing at the same thing. That makes sense. Okay, and that is what happens, uh, right? And as always, the instruction pointer increments to the next instruction. And so there's what happens with this initial, this, this line of assembly code here. Okay, moving on. Now, what happens next we're going to take EDI, recall that EDI, let's just double check our notes here. So here RDI, which is the full register, EDI is the right 32 bits. That's what we use for the first parameter of the function, which, you know, like we know that that's called A in the C code. But this is basically the data of the first parameter. Why are we calling EDI rather than RDI? Well, it's an int, right? It's an int value. And so we don't need to use up all 64 bits, right? All eight bytes for an int that only takes up four bytes. So we only need the right half of the register to store what we need to store. So we're only using EDI because we don't need anything more for an int rather than RDI. Okay, now what is the rest of what's going on here? We look at the base pointer. We go up by four bytes, right? Because, you know, that's all we need for an int again, right? So we go up by four bytes, and in those four bytes, we put this EDI, which is the input value. So basically, so if, if RBP, let's recall what RBP is. So this is RBP, and we are subtracting four from this address. So, so subtracting four from that address would result in this, right? So if you did the hex calculations and you took the hex D20 subtract four, you get D1C in hex. 
And so in this locate, right, like the value that was in EDI, this 28 or 28 in hex, is what's get, getting stored four addresses above the base pointer. And what else is going on here? I guess that's basically there. Yeah, that's the whole story. And as always, the instruction pointer increments to the next instruction. So we come down here and what's going on here. Now we take what we, you know, right, like that address that we just used, right? So we basically just took the input data, put it into a place in memory. Now we're pulling that same data out of that same location in memory and moving it into the return. And this maybe seems a little bit funny. I mean, like, why did we have to go through memory to do this? Well, that maybe is an optimization that if we were writing assembly directly, we wouldn't do, right? Couldn't we have maybe simply took the value of EDI and put it directly into EAX? Well, I think we could have, but we're just talking about the assembly code that is generated by the compiler and the compiler doesn't always think about optimizations like this. So in any case, but just to continue describing what's going on here. So we're taking the value, right? This is the value in memory where we just wrote the input value and we are moving that into the return address. So EAX now also has this value 28 in hex, which we had written in memory. And that was what was passed in by the call to the function into that first parameter. Next, what do we do? Next, we add the constant two into the return address. So you can see that EAX is updated from the previous EAX value by being incremented by two values. I guess it used to be 28 and now it's two or two eight and now it's two A because eight plus two is A in hex. And I guess that's all that happens here. Just the return register is incremented like that. And the program instruction pointer, or the register instruction pointer increments as always. So nothing interesting there. And then we pop the RBP value. So what does that mean? Keep in mind, what does a pop do? It takes the current stack pointer, and remember that like this whole time the stack pointer, can we, yeah, the, the stack pointer was this D20, which was, you know, kind of never changed, right? Like we, we moved the stack pointer up by eight, which is to say we subtracted eight at the initial push uh, for the whole thing, and it never changed after that. And that's because like we didn't out, right? We didn't declare any further variables. We didn't need to like, you know, get any extra space or anything like that. So we didn't need to move the stack pointer this whole time because we just went immediately into a, a call to return. But anyway, so the stack pointer has just been staying the same place that we put it the whole time. And so that, so therefore, what was it storing? It was storing, recall, we said it stores the location of the old base pointer. And so we're taking that value and we're putting that value at that address. So basically we're taking the old base pointer and moving it back into the base pointer, which right is to say that we are basically removing the stack frame that we put here, that we added, in order to do this call to the function. We're basically getting ready to end the, the call to this function, right? That's why we're doing this, is we're setting the base pointer back to, so that we can kind of hand it back off to the thing just underneath in the stack frame. And keep in mind that pop also reduces the stack pointer, or I get, or sends it lower, which is to say adds eight, and that sends it back to the correct address for the stack pointer now that we're returning everything back to the the caller right whatever called this function we're return we're handing control back over to it and then retq i think the book says that we're not going to worry too much about exactly what retq does except that it basically just you know, hands everything over to the caller, right? We're not gonna worry about exactly at the hardware level how that happens, exactly what needs to be done, but we'll just take it for granted that RETQ is basically what we almost always do at the end of a function, right? So this you almost always see at the beginning of a function call, getting everything ready for the function to get going. And this is what you see at the end of a function almost always in order to hand everything back off to the caller.